Oh well, here we go, the laboriousness of beekeeping setting up for the big move. We're on the move, so we've got to get ourselves a bit organised. And sometimes you have a bit of a win. I bought some bloody, um, well, they weren't the most fabulous bee boxes. Part of the deal with these hive locks though that were needing to be fixed. And I thought, well that was a pretty good arrangement. But of course, as per with much things, a good deal sometimes comes with some effort. So here we are, unravelling crap. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, maybe just buy them in the mail if you only need a couple. <laughs> How come everything just takes so bloody long? It's just ridiculous. My oh, God, grief. I suppose if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, wouldn't they? I'm turning over a new leaf, so I'm just going to try and go and get a bin so we can throw the crap in the bin and not on the floor and then trip over it later, so... I'm maturing, you'd be pleased to know. <laughs> oh, sorry, lighting. Hey, I wonder if the bloke who invented beer bins, he would have made a bloody fortune, wouldn't he? The wheelie bin man? Oh, I was just wondering if the bin man, the people that got the contract to make wheelie bins. The wheelie bin people, they made a bloody fortune. The poor bastards that were making the bins that were picked up by hand, they all went broke, so I don't know. Or maybe they transitioned. Is that what happened? I don't know. Does anybody out there in, in the world know what happened to the people that were making the other bins before the wheelie bins turned up? And the poor garbage truck dude. I mean, not, not poor him. I mean, God, I knew a bloke who used to pick up the garbage. And it wasn't a bad gig because they got, you know, a few other bits and pieces. But now they just got, like, instead of ten blokes, they got one bloke in a truck going whiz, 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 whiz past with all this stuff. And they want to make the bins smaller. I don't know. How big are your bins over there in the USA? Are they like little tiny little fucking bins? I don't know. Do you have bins on wheels or do they still pick them up out of the streets? I don't know. I'm sure they have a wheelie bin system, wouldn't they? That's a bit of a digression away from beekeeping. But anyway, it's interesting how the planet's evolving. And how bloody big are the rubbish dumps? I mean, that's kind of a bit of a spin out. Like, goodness gracious me. The amount of crap we've got in landfill which is, ter which is not terribly productive for the little ladies, as a matter of fact, so I don't know. So anyway, I think I'm becoming a greenie, which is a little bit bloody weird. So as you can see, I've unraveled me raveling, and then I bought some new strapping, which is kind of cool. Because I was looking at it in the original format, and I thought, can you imagine having a great big sheet of tin and trying to cut that shit in a straight line to get a little strap like that? Good God. So obviously they've got, what do you do? tin cutting things to make straps. But anyway, we'll just straighten up the end here because I was trying out a different pair of tin snips. These tin snips aren't real flash, by the way. If you, as per usual with everything else on my farm, it's a bit shit. Come on, you piece of crap. I do have some nice tin snips, but they're out of the other block. That's my Cheshire cat look, <laughs> just in case the cameraman gets excited. I've got a very um, professional measuring area here, which is the length of the bench and the, and the table booter. Is that to be a tail kicker? No, anyway. <laughs> I don't know. So you're going to hang that over the edge of there. And then I've got to go back to the end of the bench. And that's about as much as I want. Yeah, it looks like trying to wrap up a snake. A metal snake. Well, that ain't even worked. That's a bloody miracle. <laughs> oh, must be because the camera's on. But we just straighten our end up. And I've got. The interesting thing to remember if you buy second hand crap is there's some bits you have to throw out because some of these are really bent. But this one looks alright, so it's got a little bit of hoopo on the edge there. So I think we'll just give it a little bit of a tap on the bench to try and, um, well, it looks pretty good, but we might just make sure it's square. Because of course, I haven't got my glasses on, so the eyes aren't all that flash. So I figure, if in doubt, give it a whack. Try doing that on the top of a foam, foam bee box and see how you get on. <laughs> now, there's a few different ways to get this bloody stupid wire in here. Not wire, tin, whatever this is, tin strap. And you can go around, I don't know, I've done it a few different ways. I think the best way is to go around and then stick it back in there and then tap it down and then go around from the other end. 
Now that didn't make any bloody sense at all, did it? But anyway, we'll give you a bit of a demo. That's what happens when you read instructions, isn't it? It's when you go to bloody Ikea and they say, get the screw and stick it around backwards in the box. Anything that says easy to assemble should scare the shit out of you. I reckon I spent three days trying to put my kids' Christmas presents together one time, but that was good fun. Because we've got a little lip here. A little bit of tin there, and so we want to put that underneath that lip, <sighs> if we're lucky. Not as easy as it looks, so just buy them already made, it saves a whole lot of problems. It's all about economics in the end, is it? No, I don't, sorry. It's just as well I'm not worth nothing in here yet, isn't it? Right, now, put that there, and we're going to just bend that bit down, so we can get a bit of a start. Because we want to hold that underneath there. So we'll get that. Now they know. And we'll give it a bit of a whack. And then we've got a starting point. Why not to get it too crinked? Right around there. Now you could just stop at that. But being that I'm a bit of a paranoid fella, I'm going to go around an extra time. Because I don't want this stupid thing to fall out. Now, a trick for young players is you've got to make sure the bloody thing is in a circle, otherwise you get it halfway around and you end up with a kink. And then you've got to unravel yourself. It's not much good, that isn't. Be a bit careful not to cut yourself, because if you get it here and you slip down there, you whew. So supposedly, if you haven't got, you know, old callous bush bee man hands, get yourself a pair of nice gloves and, you know, don't be, af don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to put your gloves on. Just because I'm silly and haven't got a pair, that doesn't... What is that? What is that? What did your mum and dad used to tell you? Do as I tell you, don't do as I do. Or something or other. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. It bloody hurts worse than a paper cut when you cut yourself with this stuff. So things not to do. God, I tell you what. That would be you got to put your PP gear on, wouldn't it? Personal protective gear. Is that pee pee? Now the interesting thing that I've always bloody found is getting this stupid thing rolled up the right way round. Because if you do it the wrong way, then you've got to put a twist in your strap when you do it up, because you've got to get that bit at the bottom. So, anyway, all you people out there in beekeeping land that have made a hundred thousands of these things, don't get excited. <laughs> yes. So we're just going to roll the roll the extra bit on here. So we end up with all the strapping hooked to our lever action part of this bit that hooks into that bit. So then it can go around the hive and hook together. We'll just give that a little tap to keep it a bit tensionized. And then we roll it up. Now this is the part where it gets a bit interesting. But you've got to imagine you're around the bee box, back to front. Oh, come on. Oh, turn over. So anyway, so you're up over the bee box. Here's your circle, your bee boxes, your legs. And you're coming in, and you're going to clamp there. Like that. And hook it down. So you want the bloody wire, or the tin, at the bottom. If you have it, I guess around that way, and you try to hook it up with it up the top, but the stupid thing doesn't clamp. So... So you basically, you got to remember, you're upside down and inside out and back to front, a bit like I used to wear my t-shirts when I was a kid. But anyway, so, so that's the go. Remember, it's opposite to what you think when you've got it on the bench, so. Because you're going around the bee box. So then we can make it all nice and neat and tidy. Like I said, don't slide your hand along the sharp edge, otherwise you'll be very upset with yourself. You know the thing that surprises me about this beekeeping gig, though, is the amount of time amount of time it takes to do these fiddly little jobs to get prepared. Everything just seems to take a fair bit of effort. Right. Which is alright, but it just surprises me how long it all can take. Anyway, hopefully we've got that sorted out. And then we'll put it in our box. And we're making a little collection over here we are. And we'll do another one. And this just goes on and on and on. <laughs>
We've just got to make a few. Oh, look at that. I got bitten by an ant the other day. Look at that bloody thing. They're nastier than bees. Oh, this is my tree tying stuff. So it's not exactly the same as the. Ah, oh, hell. I thought it would work alright for the bit. These are for the, the paradise foxes. Because you obviously can't put a metal strap on them, otherwise you would get very excited. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't be paradise, would it? Anyway, we'll just put it on my high quality um, dispenser. Well, you know, no expense spared here. This is an old charcoal barbie if you're wondering what's going on. And what it's doing in my shed, I don't know, other than the fact that it's covered in crap. But anyway, that's what happens, isn't it? What is it? Any flat surface should be covered in shit. <laughs> I think that's how it works. It's the same measure, like the same, same system. I've got the same measurement going on. And we'll just dangle it over the edge of the very fancy measurement. Alright, look at that, we've got one prepared area. Oh, I think I need a new Stanley knife. So it's really just the same hive locks that we're going to use. We're just going to reinvent these. Just going to put cloth on there instead of wire because obviously on the paradise boxes, it's probably not advantageous to use wire. But, hell, I have done, but just don't tell Mr. Paradise. Anyway, that's the go. This time you don't have to unbend the bendy bit because we're going to just tie a knot in it. I would imagine if you were really motivated you would have a special bloody clippy up machine, but I haven't got a clippy up machine, so I'm just going to have to be a bit dodgy and tie a knot in it. I reckon the end result won't be that much different anyway. What's going on? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how you open this jolly Stanley knife. They make them all different, so just to confuse the shit out of poor old folks like me. Can anybody out there read the directions and let me know what I'm supposed to be doing? I can't figure it out. Oh, damn it. This is a moment when you get your bloody screwdriver and you break some shit, isn't it? <laughs> you go, what's going on, you piece of shit? Hey, come on. Maybe that's why it's still so bloody blunt, because I couldn't figure out how to change it last time. So what do I do? I decide to change it while you lot are watching me, which is even more silly. So what happens? Well, apparently, according to people in the in the know that actually have eyes that work, which is very helpful, you can roll the little thingamajig here, which I was trying to play with, and you just pull the blade out, and there you go. You've got an end of a blade that's not rusty. So hopefully that's a bit sharper. Oh, it pays to be young and intelligent, doesn't it? These bloody youth of today. I mean, hell, not only can they use a mobile phone, they can get an old blade out of a cutting machine. So, ah. Oh. Oh, well, that bloody hell, Harry. Oh, there go. Well, I reckon it's almost time for me to retire if I can't get a bloody blade changed over. But anyway, not to worry. <laughs> Apparently the expert with Stanley knives is going to show you how to tie a knot, which is, yeah, yes, yes. The cameraman's having a bit of a laugh at me. But that's okay. You know what? I have my moments. There's a, there's a few things that I'm good at. Can't think of any off the top of my head, but still. <laughs> anyway, we're just going to thread this through here, a bit similar to the to the whole idea for the metal, but obviously it's not metal, so you want to just, I like to just sort of fold it under itself. So poke it in the wrong side, and back underneath itself, and back through there before I tie the knot. So in some respects, you wouldn't even have to tie a knot, because if you hold that, pull that, and it'll pull on itself. And there you've got, you've got a knot already in there. And you just tie a little bit of a daggy ass reef knot. Again, to sort of give it a double bit of bit. Is that a word, a double bit of bit? bit? No, you probably not. It's definitely not fucking English anyway, is it? You funny man, honestly. Goodness gracious. No wonder that poor bloody English teacher's got rid of me. Anyway. Come on, you sharp blade. But yeah, you don't cut yourself with your new Stanley knife blade. Maybe we'll just do that. Oh, look at that. Oh, the hell. It's like a new one. Right, anyway, so you've got, you've obviously got, like I said, you want to pretend that you've got a bee box. So you're pretending that the bee box is here and you're just going to make sure your line, you've got all your cord the right way around so it doesn't twist. The bloody thing not to be bent underneath your foot. All of a sudden, you become a human bee box. Right, 
Cool. So then you get that bit. And you go and you want to do something similar to this end. So you're going to go around. It's a little bit wasteful, but you're going to go around there. Then you're going to go underneath. So you're basically making a knot before you make a knot. So you're under there, like that, through there, back through there. So then you've sort of tied a knot around the bit that you've got going on. So even if it lets go, you're still not, like even if this crappy little reef knot you're about to tie doesn't do so well, you've still got it already secured. So it's already sort of half a knot. And you just finish it off. The ones you buy got a cool little clamp that you just, and they've obviously gone around there and they've just got a metal bit that you use for strapping. But the strapping one that I've got isn't the right size, so anyway. So this is a little bit roughness. Oh, I don't know. One day I might get really, really bloody excited and get a proper up one. We're rolling, rolling, rolling up the bits. So anyway, here we go. So you've got them wrapped up. You make yourself a little thing. Now, if you're really sensible, you would have had a rubber band that you could put around here so they don't all get unraveled. But I've just managed to steal a cute little cane basket out of the cupboard inside. As you know, you're sworn to secrecy. Don't tell the missus that I've got a little cane pot. So thanks to all you guys out there in Patreon world. Actually, we're over, we're over 100 Patreon supporters, but I'd just like to give a shout out to Lesser. Thank you very much for being our 100th Patreon supporter. And we're, we're just kicking around some ideas here as into what, um, you know, thank you. We might, we might send you a couple of stickers and a thank you card. It's champion effort. And thank you to all of you guys out there that are sort of supporting the show and um, yeah, making it happen. And it's really awesome. I can't really believe how lucky we are that you enjoy the show and we enjoy making it for you. It's just a matter of, yeah, fitting it all together. So that's what the Patreon thing's about, so as we can offset some of the other expenses that that go with it. We bought a bought a cool bloody um, what's it called? A micro lens thingamajig for the camera. So we can take some awesome close-up shots. So that's coming up soon. You ought to see the little girls and they're rubbing their eyes and their little tongues and all sorts of weird art shit that you wouldn't even see with your natural eye. So cool. Thank you very much and keep on keeping on. And don't forget to share. Don't forget to share with your friends and say, yeah, watch the Bush Bee Man, because he's worth a bloody laugh, that crazy Australian bloke. Cool, good on ya. <laughs>